board. Welcome everyone. My name is Lisa Danilchuk and this is How We Can Heal Trauma with Yoga. I have lots of thoughts, lots of thoughts to share. My name is Lisa Danilchuk. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm also an experienced registered yoga teacher and lots of other alphabet soup things that I'll share with you in a moment. It's really nice to meet you. Those of you just joining, the chat's disabled, but <clears throat> I want to know in the Q&A. So if you have your, I know it's easier on a desktop and I think, you, yeah, you can get it on your phone too in the Zoom. Down to the little q and I'd love to know about you. Um, first things first, I'll just share some of my background. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, experienced registered yoga teacher, uh, founder of the Center for Yoga and Trauma Recovery, which is here in Oakland, California. I've written a couple of books on yoga and trauma recovery. And last, the year before last, I was president of an international organization for trauma and dissociation. Yeah. So I also went to Harvard and UCLA. Go Bruins. Hi, Gaia. So happy to have you here. Yay. Up from up in BC. Awesome. Oh, I, I want to have a conversation with each of you who have commented in the, in the Q&A already. Uh, but we'll catch up later. Uh, so these are my credentials and my background, and I'll share a little bit more of, you know, what brought me to this work in a moment, but all this just to say, you know, I'm really passionate about this work, I'm really dedicated to it, and I know some of you know me really well, and some of you are just meeting me, um, just to give you a little context about who I am, but, you know, I'm honestly more interested, I almost skipped that slide in my head, I'm more interested in who you are, right? <laughs> so we've got a couple hundred people who registered for this webinar. I know some of you are going to watch it on the recording. And I feel like I know you even if I don't know you. My guess is you've practiced yoga, yoga means a lot to you, or you're yoga curious. Maybe you're a counselor or a therapist or a support person of types. We've also got some emergency service responders, paramedics, massage therapists, <clears throat> teachers, really common for folks to be people who want to take in information about wellness and healing and share it, maybe working with kids, wellness providers, healing professionals, and pro healers. Okay, what's the difference between a healing professional and a pro healer? A healing professional is someone who got the certification, studied, you know, maybe has a board regulating their practice or maybe has a spiritual teacher that they kind of anchor all their work in. A pro healer is someone who has been through it, right? Time tested, rubber meets the road, applied these things with themselves and with others, or maybe just in your own life. And really, this is the foundation. I was just recording a new podcast for the How We Can Heal podcast yesterday. And we were talking about how that bringing it back to yourself first and doing your own work is the cornerstone is the foundation of providing these types of services to others. So I see you out there, you're a healing professional, you're probably also a pro healer, and that's not something that stops, it's something we keep doing throughout life. So I'd love to hear in the chat, are you a yogi? Are you a mental health professional? Sorry, I'm gonna say chat, but I mean Q&A. I'd love to see in the Q&A. Are you a teacher, a massage therapist? Okay, so we've got licensed clinical so social worker, psychologist, awesome, massage therapist, yoga teacher, yoga practitioner, LCSW, L -I -C -S -W and yoga teacher, psychologist and yogi, yogi pro healer teacher, shout out to my pro healers out there, Yes. Okay. I love it. Another pro healer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yogi meditation, yoga teacher, social worker in training, support worker, pro healer, yoga teacher, massage therapist, spiritual director, RN. There's a lot of you out here who are wearing a number of these hats, right? And crossing them over. Um, I love that because I feel like maybe 20 years ago, that was less common and it's so much more common now. And this is the world that we all live in. Okay, I'll read off a few more. Registered yoga teacher, licensed alcohol drug counselor. Love it. Thank you for doing that important work. LADCI, yoga therapist, active yogi, RYT, LSW, retired. Congratulations on that. I hope you are living it up, Margareta. Practiced yoga, became a teacher, left a 20-year DV marriage pro healer. Shout out. Oh, wow. 
suffering from CPTSD. Yeah. So like I said, it's ongoing, right? It is ongoing. Okay. We got another Reiki practitioner. Okay. Right. I love all this stuff. We're all into healing ourselves, helping others. Um, this is really powerful work. I just shared a poem on my Facebook page, my professional Facebook page. And it was really beautiful. It's actually a book my mom is reading and she shared it with me. And it was, um, like this person getting up in the morning and they're like, oh, but I'm tired. And this angel comes to them and says, yes, but you know, the light and the dark are right on the edge of each other. And we need your light. We need your, your healing. Um, and the person's like getting coffee and they're like, oh, I don't know. What can I do? Right. And they're like, I guess I can be kind to people. Okay. I can do that. I guess, I guess I can work on myself. Okay. I can do that. I guess I can share that with others. That sounds nice. Right. So I feel like a lot of us, especially if we can call it post pandemic, are you know, tired, but we're still committed to love uh, at the end of the day. So I see you. I welcome you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. I want to, I always like to be clear and I always like to like give you what I tell you I'm going to give you when I do an outline for a workshop like this. So today, this is what we're going to cover a simple, but as I said, not easy practice to help manage intrusive thoughts. We're also gonna cover how yoga can help us face difficult emotions, how yoga works with folks experiencing dissociation, how yoga can address the impacts of trauma on our nervous system. I do promise I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Y4T program. Some of you have already been through it multiple times. If you have been through it before and you wanna join us again for the next one, just email y4t at howwecanheal.com and Alexis will get you all set up. You can always repeat the program at no extra cost. And I'm gonna give away some books. So two of my books are on display right here. <laughs> this is the third one, Yoga for Trauma Recovery. This is the second one, How You Can Heal. And the first one used to be there, but it got knocked down by my daughter because she's tall enough to crawl up there and she just like, she got it. So it's tucked away somewhere. It's tucked away on the green blanket there. Anywho, I'll be giving away some books, so stick around till the end. And anytime we're giving our time and attention to something, I think it's important to ask and to answer, why is this important? Um, shout out to my cat lovers out there. I am both a cat and a dog person, if you can believe it. I grew up with cats, now we have two dogs. You might hear them in the background. Uh, there are just too many traumatic events going on in the world for me to name them all, and I'm not going to spend this time you know, being a news feed scroll, because you're aware, there's a lot going on. And people just in anyone who has social media, anyone who has access to the internet or a phone is seeing and digesting some form of traumatic event. Um, we're also living through, we, we've all, we're all here, we've lived through a pandemic, which was absolutely uh, it could be very traumatizing in different ways and absolutely a traumatic event. So there's just too many to name going on right now. It's out there. We're in it. And we all need really simple tools. We can practice and we can share. Because just like in any relationship, right, like a friendship, I have a best friend that I grew up with my entire life. And we used to joke that like when one was up, the other was down. And it was just kind of like this. And we thought, you know what? Maybe it was just designed to be that way, like divinely designed so that there was always someone to hold the light and to hold the hope. And so we're all human in here and we're gonna have our ups and downs. And we need communities that are aware of these simple tools and can share them compassionately, skillfully, appropriately in the moment when we need them the most. It's also really important, those of you that are yoga teachers, that are therapists, that we're just understanding how and why, like the how and the why behind all this work, right? This helps us be skillful. It helps us be intentional. It helps us, hi, Boomy. <laughs> it helps us be responsive to what's actually happening in the moment. Um, and, and so the more we know and the more context we have, the more we understand, the more we can be responsive in that way. Oh my goodness, this, my daughter is peeking in. Do you wanna, you gotta come show. You gotta come. Do you guys wanna see a cute baby just real quick? <laughs> okay, she's coming. 
And this awareness can help prevent harm to like these beautiful, innocent souls who never deserve to be treated poorly. Here's Isabella. Hi, <laughs> Mama. You have a good nap. And this is Alex. <laughs> and these are the puppies. And I think they're all going to go on a walk now. Mama loves you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Okay. So if we think of every soul in the world as like being this precious, beautiful person, you know, some people go through and I've heard plenty of stories. I'm sure you have too. some of the most horrific things and everyone deserves to be treated with care. And the people who have been through the most horrific things are the ones who really need this information out there in, um, in the collective. Right. Okay. I think I saw, we can't see. Oh, you can't see the PowerPoint and you can't see me. What is happening? Oh my goodness. Let me fix that. What happened there? Okay, sorry, I'm going back through. You can't see the books. Thank you guys. I'm just gonna go back through a couple slides then so you can see. You can't see me. Why can't you see me? I'm gonna stop my video and start my video again. And then if those of you lovely who, you couldn't see my daughter. Oh, you see that. Ah, okay, I see what's happening, maybe. Hold on, Alex is helping me. Tech moment, moment of mindfulness. Can you see? Okay, okay, let's bring Isabella back because I see I see what Alex is doing on his phone. You couldn't see my daughter. <gasps> oh, Karen says I can see you both, no problem. Oh, I think I know what's happening. She's back. She's back for more. <laughs> oh my God, I love her so much. We could just do this the whole time. Um, I think what's probably happening if you're on a like a iPad or a phone that you probably need to swipe one way or the other on Zoom in order, you're probably seeing just the slides and not my video. So try the little swipey thing back and forth. It's probably a device thing, but she'll be on the recording. Come back one more time, babe. <laughs> Isabella, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay, so I see she's on the recording. You'll get it on the recording if you can't see it and you're just seeing the slides right now. Are you seeing the slides? We can see the PowerPoint. Got it, okay. You know. <laughs> so let me catch this back up. I see someone's raising their hand. I'm not able to take the live questions now. Now you're visible. So cute. Yeah. Okay. You can see from the phone. All right. So everyone saw the precious little babe. Let me catch us back up. And you can see the slides. Okay, good. Good. Because I'm just, you know, I only got so many tech ideas just to reset the whole thing as my, my usual go-to. So I want to come back to, especially those of you who just met me, like why listen to this random woman you just met on the Lost Coast Trail? This is a picture of me hiking, I think one or two days into the Lost Coast Trail on the north side of um, California, the north coast. And I meet a lot of people on the trail and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I do work in yoga and trauma recovery. And most people are like, mm, what's that? That's interesting. That's strange. I'm not used to that. And like I started to say earlier, like I just spent a lot of time thinking about this stuff, right? I've written three books on yoga and trauma recovery. I created the first ever to exist in time and space that I'm aware of certification and training program on yoga and trauma recovery in 2015. So if you search for yoga trauma uh, online training in 2015, this was the only thing that came up. And I'm a pro healer myself, right? A lot of this came from as I was studying all of this at UCLA, my family traumatically lost my brother very suddenly, and yoga was my thing. I was doing so much at the time. I was in every club. My roommate used to be like, come on, Lisa, like, just skip it. <laughs> um, but I just, I let everything else go, and yoga was so helpful and so healing for me. So I, I dove into that wholeheartedly, and there was always this part of my brain going, why? Why is this the thing? Uh, and I really spent the last two decades, you know, that was 22 years ago, answering that question and sharing anything and everything that that I could learn. So this is definitely um, like a interest of mine academically, but it's also like a very body based, heartfelt feeling uh, that I want to share and my time on this earth with as many people who want to hear it. Okay. So I put this out in a lot of ways. Now you can see the books, if you didn't see them earlier, they're over my shoulder. 
uh, embodied healing, how you can heal, yoga for trauma recovery. I have a beautiful podcast called How We Can Heal that has a lot of conversations with professionals in this field. I founded the Center for Yoga and Trauma Recovery. I started this first online training program in yoga and trauma. I'm really into it, okay? And, and maybe you are too. Maybe you've been along for this ride uh, or maybe you're just stepping in. But when I started, this like wasn't a field, <laughs> right? People would ask when I was graduating UCLA, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to do work in yoga and trauma and healing. And, you know, I can't really tell you what that job looks like. So come back in 10 years and I'll let you know. Uh, and so, yeah, fun full circle moments. This is how it's all evolved 20 plus years later. I also want to let you know that today's tips, what I'm sharing with you is not random. I'm not just picking Oh, thank you, Karen. Yoga for Trauma Recovery is one of the best books on the topic I have read. Thank you so much. Thank you. That means so much to me. I'm going to save your comment. I'm going to tuck it right here. I worked really hard on that, so I appreciate it. Um, Alex knows. <laughs> Today's tips are not random, okay? So, so these are uh, rooted in really the general understanding of post-traumatic stress in the field. And that comes from this big book, right? Uh, that really outlines, and I'm not going to get into the diagnostics of it, but I just want you to see the thread here, right? That when we're talking about post-traumatic stress, we're talking about intrusive thought, avoiding emotion or feeling, changes in how we think or feel about ourselves, changes in how our nervous system is responding to life, to our environment, even to sleep sometimes, sometimes our sleep is disrupted, and there's also this dissociative subtype that for today, I'm going to fold into the changes in thought and mood, because that's really, I think, the biggest change in thought and mood is when we actually change personality or identity, right? So again, I'm not going to stay deep in these psychological weeds. Today, we're going to make this really easy to understand and apply. Most of all, some of you know this, some of you studied this, this is old hat for you. Others of you are like, ugh, that sounds really technical and clinical. Well, it is, <laughs> but I just want you to know that everything I'm sharing comes from this place, okay? It's woven through in a very uh, intentional way. So intrusive thoughts, what are intrusive thoughts? Anything that comes to your brain when you are not wanting it, right? So I'm gonna give a really benign example because I like to give those instead of um, things that are trauma cues. Say you, um, you see an ad for like a chocolate cake or a billboard or something, and then you just can't stop thinking about it the rest of the day. And like, you won't rest until you get the chocolate cake or whatever the thing is. A lot of advertising works this way, right? Like you see an image of something and it's like, it's a hot day. And, you know, you see like a cold soda can, you haven't had a soda in 10 years, but you're like, oh, that looks so good just because you're thirsty, right? So it's an aside, anything that pulls you <clears throat> from the present into typically the past, when we're talking about trauma, we would call an intrusive thought, okay? And this can also be a feeling, right? So you're do, 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 doing your day and your day is fine, but some emotion from the past comes in. Anyone who's grieved knows that this happens, right? Grief is not just like, oh, okay, I made a transition from one day to the next and this person's gone. We'll have feelings and waves that come up for years. And we don't have to be thinking about it. It's not like, oh, I opened a photo album and I'm reminiscing about this person. It's just like, oh, I'm walking down the street, I'm on my yoga mat, and woof, here it comes. Sometimes it comes up as behavior, and that kind of gets into when we, uh, how we cope with things. But often, you know, we'll be doing something, <clears throat> we'll be doing something that we feel like is keeping us safe, right, with, without even much awareness. And this can change our whole perspective and worldview. Like if we've been through something traumatic, we can start to see the whole world differently. And it's really our past projecting on our present. This is just our brain doing its job. It's keeping information alive from what we've been through. It's trying to protect us. It's trying to alert us to danger. Uh, but when we're talking about post-traumatic stress and PTSD in particular, or complex trauma for that matter, these things happen in a way where it's it's really not serving your life. Like it's really disrupting your life, right? It's making it hard to be present. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. This is about someone named Tony, real name, but not full name. <laughs> not even his full first name. 
So I told, I mentioned my best friend that I grew up with earlier. Her name's Katrina. We call each other weenie, long story. Anyhow, uh, I would go over to Katrina's house and we had, I had two older brothers. She had two older brothers. They were all the same age. We were like a mirror image of each other's families. And they had, they would play like Dungeons and Dragons and get a bunch of like candy and soda and hang out. And I don't, you know, it was, it was funny. Our brothers had a friend named Tony. And he was this person that would just follow you wherever, whenever. He would just walk alongside you, right? So if you got up to go get something to drink, he'd be in the kitchen and you're like, oh, hey, hey, Tony, right? And then you go back to the game and he comes back with you. So much so that my brother would always joke, my brother, Matt, he's the one who passed, love him, blessings. Hi, Matt. He's loving that I'm telling this story. I'm telling you <laughs> that my brother Matt would get up to go to the bathroom and Tony would sort of absentmindedly follow him into the bathroom, like right on his shoulder, you know, just like do, do, do. So in our little circle of families, we started calling it when someone would walk really close to you and almost like attach themselves to your shoulder, we would say, you're pulling a Tony or you're Tonying me. <clears throat> so walking down the street and someone's kind of crowding you, you'd be like, oh, you know, stop pulling a Tony, get off of me, you know, take your space. And I share this with you to try to offer a, you know, real life, but also sort of light example of how an intrusive thought might feel. It might feel like you just can't shake it. Like it shows up when you're least expecting it. Like you're trying to go to the bathroom, you're trying to take a shower, you're trying to fall asleep at night and like, Tony's right there, just like ding, ding. So <clears throat> how do we deal with that when there's this person, or in this case with thoughts, this thing, this memory, this feeling, this behavior that just keeps circling around? Yoga's got something for that, right? And yoga is about so many things. <laughs> we can define it so many ways, and we won't go through all the definitions today. But yoga is really about being present, right? I mean, that that theme has even made its way into advertisements at this point, right? Yoga and just take a breath and be present, connect with the moment. We've probably heard it so much it can, can even start to lose its meaning, but it's a really powerful practice to connect with the present moment. So if there's some thought, some memory, some experience coming into the present moment, how do we be more strongly connected to now than we are to then. So this is why I say this is a simple, but not easy practice, right? Very much easier said than done. So we're practicing connecting to our current environment in order to amplify those feelings and experiences over the traumatic one. And the traumatic one is usually pretty loud, right? So this is quite challenging. But even right now, as you're here with me today, can you notice, and hopefully you're in a relatively neutral or pretty safe environment, can you look around and notice your environment? This is something we do a lot in yoga every day. It's not something that's one and done. It's not something that I've done once and it's over. This is something that I do every day. And it actually really helps me enjoy my life too, right? Because I notice the bright yellow lemons outside of the window. I notice when my thoughts are getting loud or fearful or critical. I notice if I'm feeling a certain way, if I'm feeling sad or angry or fearful, scared. And we can start to notice patterns. And patterns are you know, especially when we talk about complex trauma, but even with, you know, a single event of, of trauma, the patterns are what can be most challenging to see um, and challenging to overcome, but also have the most power in shifting our experience of life. So I'm going to invite you right now to, as long as it's safe for you in your environment, to practice this with me. We're gonna start with an anchor and that can be a physical or a mental anchor. Physical anchor might be pressing your feet into the floor, leaning back into your chair, grounding down into the earth. Mental anchor might be something really simple 
like this is what's happening right now. This is what's happening right now. I'm in a training and I'm learning about trauma and yoga. This is what's happening right now. I am looking out the window at a yellow lemon. So I'm gonna invite you to just pick something really neutral, maybe positive, really simple to anchor. Again, maybe physical in your body, might be external with sight, sound or smell works as well. And it can be the most common thing. I can hear the air filter right now. I often hear the sound of the refrigerator buzzing. I often like to ground and feel my feet on the floor. Not everyone loves that anchor, but it's a common one. I love when I'm outdoors and I actually see a bird land on the tree because that one's dynamic, right? And you can watch and be really attuned to what's happening in the moment. It kind of pulls you in even more when it's, it's alive, right? <clears throat> and if you put refrigerator grounding bird into chat GBT, you get something that looks kind of like this. If you can see the slides, it's a yellow bird in the refrigerator. And maybe this helps to remind you, like this is something kind of strange and random, but uh, I mean, it would be dynamic if it were in real life that you can pull your attention to that takes some of that energy and attention out of whatever cycles or whatever, you know, little Tony thoughts were coming from the back and it pulls us into the present moment. So take a breath. If that serves you, notice what's happening in your immediate environment. I promise this is so simple, but it's a long-term practice that builds and is so good for our brains neurologically and is also really good for us to be able to access and connect with joy when it's happening in our environment. Okay, so take a moment and just shake off that experience. Notice how that felt for you, okay? What often happens when we try to anchor, or when we do anchor, we go, oh, look at that yellow lemon. And if we stay with it for a while and we quiet down some of the thinking mind, in yoga, we'd call that chitta vrittis, right? Like turnings of the mind. We like to say chit happens, right? Your thoughts happen, they just keep happening. When we quiet that down, older emotions that are in there, remember I mentioned intrusions can be uh, feeling based as well, <clears throat> will start to arise. Uh, and there's a really common saying, you have to feel it to heal it, right? And I uh, found this, uh, to heal at all, you have to feel it all. And a million unique pathways to healing. So uh, I like to keep that level of openness around it, but there's really some truth in when we avoid which is part of PTSD, it doesn't go away. So when we go to food, alcohol, drugs, sex, shopping, working, whatever the things that keep us busy and keep our minds, la, 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 I mean, for days, months, years at a time, decades at a time, we can be in that place. When we don't have the opportunity to connect and drop down and into some degree at least, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in, the mo in a moment when we talk about dissociation, but when we don't have that opportunity, those emotions don't tend to just resolve on their own. It's not time by itself, it's attention and presence, like we just talked about, and care that tend to help those difficult emotions move through. So yes, we wanna feel it to heal it, but not all at once really common yoga mistake or even therapy mistake is to like, let's get in there and get all the trauma out. It's like, well, you know, most traumatic things happen too much too fast. So let's not do that again. <laughs> let's go slow and steady instead. And yoga is, is a practice that can help us face difficult emotions. It provides this quiet, supported space we can connect with our bodies, we can quiet our minds, we can connect with our breath if that serves. And the thing I love about yoga is there's so many different angles and opportunities and ways to practice. You can have a really dynamic movement practice if that's what your body and your nervous system need. You can have more of a still practice if that's accessible and that's what you need, right? So depending on what's accessible and depending on what's gonna serve you, you can choose that. And yoga is 
a practice, right? We say it's not a, it's not a perfect, it's not a yoga perfect, it's a yoga practice. And this practice element helps us to practice our relationship to our emotions. So it's not trying to like go in and surgically remove the trauma. Everyone would sign up for that, right? Please take it away. It's gone. Yay, I'm better. But if we, if we were to do that, we also wouldn't necessarily have other things that come with healing, right? The learning, the wisdom, the empathy, the compassion. Uh, but this practice element helps us do a little bit over time, right? So that we can take the intensity or the pressure off of healing. It can just be a slow, beautiful journey in the direction of healing. Emotions can arise really quickly in yoga. Um, again, it's very common for a yoga teacher. You show up in a class to say, okay, everybody close your eyes and go inside. And if you have a, a lifelong history of trauma, that can be a lot to ask, right? Which is why we would start maybe with an external anchor, yellow lemon tree. <laughs> and just look at that. That's hopefully pretty neutral. It's probably a trigger for someone, but hopefully not anybody here. But emotions often emerge when we're deeper into a practice, when we're not like really trying to chase them down, right? They just show up when they feel safe and comfortable, when there's this container, when there's this space. So when I was thinking about, okay, how do we practice that today? Because I also don't want to invite any of you to unpack these really uh, intense emotions in this short training we're doing together. But I'm just gonna ask you to note, not necessarily feel into, what's an emotion that's hard for you to feel? Um, most of us have you know, feelings around feelings, right? Is it hard to feel anger? Is it hard to feel sadness? Is it hard to feel shame? I would say for most of us, this is why people tend to call these negative emotions, right? Like they're not really inherently negative or positive, they just are, but they can be for a lot of us difficult. So, if today you're in a place where you're feeling agitated, you're feeling frustrated, you're feeling angry, one thing that really serves me is to be more dynamic in my practice, to hold a plank, to move a little bit faster, not irresponsibly or messily fast, but a little bit faster to discharge some of that energy. So even if you're listening to this while you're driving and you're like <laughs> gripping the steering wheel, can you like a long, intentional, even sharp exhale to clear it out. My favorite one of these is a lion's breath. And I'm going to do it right in this screen and right in your face. Some of you know Chinese medicine. You're going to try to read my tongue. <laughs> so if you know it, do it with me. If you don't, you can watch and we'll repeat. Take a deep breath in. We're going to stick out our tongue as we exhale. Okay. One more inhale. Clear it out. One more time. And I love this because there are like gods and goddesses around the world that like Kali, right? That this like intensity, this expression, this moving this energy out. Okay. Sadness. Some of you might be feeling a little bit sad or tender. You might be grieving. You might feel a little low energy or, or, or foggy. Any of those feelings can benefit from nurturing ourselves, right? having some compassion for ourselves. Cultures are different in different places around the world, but I know this is a tough one for a lot of folks, a lot of families, a lot of places to just be with sadness and love it. So if you're feeling any amount of sadness, I'm gonna invite an inhale through my nose, straight into my heart and blow it out through my mouth. So you can try that one with me, an inhale, and an exhale. And if you notice emotion coming up and it is intense really quickly, come back to that anchor, come back to that sound of the fridge bending, sound of the fridge buzzing, that bird, that lemon. And if you want to go with me one more, we'll take one last breath here, just connecting. Another really sticky emotion is shame. And we talk about this a lot in my online training program towards the end. It's like the advanced concepts because shame can have all kinds of manifestations. But many of you know Brene Brown's work and she says the antidote, she studies shame, shame scholar for years. Antidote to shame is empathy, right? Shame cannot survive being met with empathy. 
So one way we can meet that within ourselves, and this mantra comes from the world of EFT tapping, is I fully love and accept myself. So if there's some part of you that you're not proud of or wanting to share, if there's anything in there that's like, I am bad, and if you know the tapping sequence, you can do it, but we're not going to go through all that today. You can just, I fully love and accept myself. I fully love and accept myself. And you might not fully believe it, but the magic of this is pairing. Even though I feel ashamed, I fully love and accept myself. Even though there's this cringe moment, I fully love and accept myself. And I'm going to shout out to Taylor Swift here. Stay with me. If you read her Person of the Year article in Time, there's a moment where they say, and this is like a little bit below in age, my generation. So I feel like I'm stretching here a little, but there's like the whole concept of cringe. Like you see an old video of yourself and you're like, oh my God, what was I thinking? Uh, and, you know, I hope if I watch this 20 years from now that I'll take my own message right now, that rather than, and the saying in the article is don't kill the, the part you're cringing at, your old self, and, and this is strong language, but like kill the part of you that wants to cringe. So I'm not into killing parts, <laughs> not my recommendation therapeutically, but rather than attacking your old self, can we unpack and understand why we want to be critical in the first place? And this is like super deep years of therapy work that I'm talking about here. But that's an example of shame being met with empathy. You look at an old video of yourself and you go, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. And then love. And then, wow, look at this beautiful young person, this intelligent young person who is striving and learning and trying and being messy and being out in the ring and you know, vulnerable. Can we honor that instead? Okay, before I get in a long Taylor Swift tangent, <laughs> we'll continue. Projection and enactment can show up on our yoga mat and they can seek resolution through experience. This is again, a much, you know, big, headier psychological concept, but it basically means that when there are things that are hard to feel, again, they circle around, they show up in our relationships, they show up in our lives, they show up on the yoga mat. You're like, why is everyone so competitive? And then you're like, oh, wait, maybe I am too, right? So we can really learn about ourselves um, and again, slowly show up for these difficult moments where there's a challenging emotion or there's something about our life or ourselves or what's happening um, that we don't understand. Okay, so let's take a breath. Moving on to yoga and dissociation. This is a rich topic with thousands of hours of potential for training. We're going to take a couple minutes here. How does yoga work with folks experiencing dissociation? What I want to share with you today is it's complex. So forever the beginner. I am forever the beginner. I was the president of an international organization that specializes in trauma and dissociation. I was essentially the leader of all the staff, of all the volunteers, taking care of, you know, how many members? We have 2,000, a few thousand members. Can't remember the number off the top of my head. I had it memorized two years ago. <laughs> Mama brain. And still, if I meet someone and they say I'm experiencing dissociation, I'm super curious. What do you mean by that? How is it showing up for you? Can we get um, a little more information and experience together about what this means? So it's really complex. And the thing that I'd love to for you to take home today is that uh, often we think of yoga as just this rest and digest experience. It's just this calming down. And when we're talking about an, our nervous system in response to trauma, when we're talking about our, our nervous system, when it gets to the place of dissociation, there might be parts that need to calm down and there might be parts that are having a really hard time waking up or getting off the couch. So with yoga and dissociation, we need to be skilled at addressing both hyper and hypoarousal. That just means your nervous system that's like really on or really off, right? Most common referrals for therapy, anxiety and depression, too much energy, not enough. Feeling like our nervous system is like won't calm down, won't relax, or feeling like our nervous system won't activate in response to life, okay? So 
it's really important for us to be together in not knowing, which is hard because dissociation is by definition, there's something that's unknown or disconnected. So with all we learn and study about dissociation, we're still sitting with a person who perhaps, or you know, ourselves, if this is our experience, like we might not know all of what's going on internally. We might not know all of what happened. And so with yoga and dissociation, we need to be able to be with the not knowing, right? And um, the example that I wanted to give here in terms of going slow and being aware of how much can be in our bodies and how complex this is, is uh, I was working with um, youth who were sexually exploited in Oakland. And we created this place called the Spa, Safe Place Alternative. And we were getting all excited about bringing a yoga program in. But we know, and I knew from sitting with a lot of these young people, that there was some dissociation going on. And so we're not going to go right into body, right into breath. And we actually started the yoga program, and at least it was at the spa, so this theme kind of fit, with just taking care of our hands, right? So these were mostly female identified, mostly young women, um, teens, early 20s. So we came in with our first practice of basically like, a self manicure, you know, okay, well, let's exfoliate, let's wash, let's feel the cold, let's take care of our nails, let's put the nutritious lotion on, maybe we'll pick a color that we like that makes us happy. And so someone might say like, that's not yoga, you're doing your nails. But the intention and the beginning and what came from there, which was a much fuller sort of yoga asana, and um, even some meditation practice, that was the direction we went. Okay, so in practice here, we can come back to that anchor. Again, if there's a lot going on inside, coming back to an external anchor can be really powerful, right? We can come to a mantra I said earlier, this is what's happening right now. It might just be, here we are. Someone who's experiencing dissociative identity has a lot going on inside, might not be aware of all of it. Maybe <laughs> folks internally can get on board with, here we are, right? Here I am, if you feel singular, here we are, if there's a lot going on or a lot of different identities. And an easy breath if it's accessible. Now breath is really powerful, right? So I don't always start there. A lot of times in yoga classes we do, and I do, um, but if I'm working one-on-one -on -one with someone, I'll usually go with the external safety cues for a lot longer before we do that. And it's helpful to remember you have this image here of a, a person meditating, seated with the hands in a mantra. Sometimes movement is actually more accessible when we have a lot going on. So it's always helpful to check in with the other person and go, okay, what do you need right now? So I'm going to ask you, as you're watching, as you're participating in this training, what do you need right now? And maybe closing your eyes and taking a breath feels amazing. Great go for it. Or maybe you just want to shake a little bit of energy off, right? What I love to do, uh, we're going to kind of fold this practice into the next one with our nervous system for the, well, we're doing okay on time. Because um, there's a couple different options we can go depending on what the person needs. And dissociation, I, like I said, it gets so complex that like there's infinite iterations of how we could respond. And coming back to basics, tends to be the best, um, but also responsive basics. Like what, what, why are we doing this? So when we're talking about yoga and your nervous system, we're talking about the brain and all the nerves that go through the body. This image gets cut at the thigh, but all the way down to the feet. And it's becoming a little more common and people are more aware that there's this relationship between yoga practice and the states in our nervous system. What we can do through yoga is notice our state, right? Am I feeling more activated? Am I feeling a little bit low or hypo aroused? And can I make a choice to stimulate or energize, to soothe or calm, to bring a little more balance? And there's more directions we can go than that, but these are the core responsive to nervous system directions that we go. And we'll take movement or shapes, breathing patterns, to help encourage our nervous system in a different direction. 
right? So if we're feeling really stuck to the couch, can we build some energy? Can we build actually some activation, hopefully, so that we can be responsive to our environment? That might mean taking care of someone. That might mean going to work or holding the laundry. We might also need rest, right? Like probably most of us here have had a day where we're going, 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 and we're like, oh, I'm so productive, I'm so productive. And then you're in bed like, <laughs> okay, go to sleep, check off that box. <laughs> and it's hard to transition. So yoga and these practices and what I'll do if I'm in that place is I'll do an inhale and a long exhale, right? And just start to do maybe some forward bends and things that are soothing. We might also need reflection, connection. These are necessities of life. So we can choose and artfully choose our yoga sequence to build the state in our nervous system that we need. Okay, so we're gonna do a super, super simple one today. Uh, if you're in a space where you can, cat, cow. Has anyone done this before? I think many of you have. I'm going to give you an excuse to do some yoga right now. I'm going to lower my standing desk down so I can show you all of my daughter's toys. <laughs> so I can show you cat cow. All right. So cat cow, and we're going to try it with an equal part breath, but I'll give you some options. Okay. So if you're in a place where you're just sitting, you can also do this. Just inhale, exhale. If it's okay for your body, if it feels good, a little arch, a little round. And if it helps connecting that with breath, if you're in a place where you've got the floor, you can inhale, stretch the front of your torso, and exhale, stretch the back. And I'm gonna invite just an even breath in each direction. But if you're feeling a little anxious, a little hot, a little irritated today, I'm gonna encourage you to focus a little more on your exhale. And if you're feeling a little more sluggish, a little stuck to the couch, a little slow to warm up, then maybe hang out a little bit longer in your inhale, stretching through your chest, breathing around your collarbones, even looking up. We'll take three rounds here. So choose your breath. If you're not sure, just stick, stick with equal inhale, exhale. And if you're sure, you can stick with a long inhale or long exhale, just exploring. One more. And when you're ready, you can shake that off. <laughs> oh, it was a Taylor Swift reference, sorry. <laughs> I wanna play this game of like dropping just because it's so dominant in our world today. It feels like it, right? I don't know if it is in your world, but I see it everywhere. Um, I just want to like drop Taylor Swift lyrics into my, into my trainings and give points to the people who notice them. It's more fun. So with these exercises, we start simple, we add slowly, especially with breath. So some of you know, more sophisticated pranayama, we would lengthen the inhale, lengthen the exhale. We don't want to go to like a really extreme count even that four, seven, eight, which is really common, I think is like a little bit much and kind of random. I would do like a three, three, and then a three, four, and then maybe a three, five, um, if that makes sense to you. Starting simple, extending the length of the breath slowly. Okay, so we just covered a lot, right? And if this is new to you, you might be like, whoa, that's a lot of information. You've got the recording. You can come back to this as many times as you like. Um, plenty of other resources out there on howwecanheal.com as well, some other trainings, um, some downloads, things like that. But we covered a lot, yeah? We talked about this simple but not easy yoga practice to help manage intrusive thoughts. It's practicing presence, anchoring in the present. We talked about how yoga can help us face difficult emotions, quieting our mind, providing a safe enough space, inviting right? Not chasing after, but just providing space for these emotions to emerge. And slowly over time, it's a practice. For many people, it's a weekly or daily practice. 
We talked about how yoga works with folks experiencing dissociation, some important things to note there. It's complex. We don't know everything. We work with what we know. We welcome what we see. So an important piece here too that I don't know I made explicit is, you know, it's not so much about, this is really common in um, some therapeutic approaches. It's like really mapping and separating everything. Like, okay, let's get all these parts and they're different. Uh, I actually believe and practice it's more about inviting this space for connection than it is about distinction. There are times um, where both are important. And we just talked about how yoga can address the impacts of trauma on our nervous system. So trauma dysregulates our nervous system in general, right? Unless we can really move through it in the moment. And we can use our yoga breath and movement. This is where I think yoga is even more powerful than a sitting meditation practice. The movement can be more approachable. The movement actually responds to the needs of our body and our nervous system in a different and I think better way. So I'm going to talk now. We've got about five more minutes about the certification program. I know I've got a lot of questions about it. Our next program starts March 11th. I'm also going to give away a book in a moment. So stick around. I know some of you already have it. I know some of you have it all marked up. I've seen them with little flags and colors. So if you're like, oh, I love this and I want to learn more and I want to get certified and I want to share other people. As I mentioned, I started this Yoga for Trauma program in 2015. It's been around for a minute. I put it to sleep. It took a nice little rest while I was on maternity leave. So since last year, it's just been resting and hibernating and just cozying up with itself because it needed that too, right? Our nervous systems need this. But there's an eight-week training starting Monday, March 11th. So that's a week from yesterday. And we cover a lot. So a lot of what we covered here is in there. You'll see it, you'll hear it, but it's in a different way. We start with health. We start with building a foundation of health, okay? So the first week, all foundations in health. So many reasons for that. There's so much trauma going on in the world. We don't want to dive right into the deep end, right? Second week, deeply understanding trauma. We used to start with this, but again, that's diving into the deep end. So we start with foundations of health. Then we go into, let's really get, what is this? If trauma is a problem, let's identify it. Let's get to know it. Then we cover somatic psychotherapy in the nervous system. So all of the theories and models behind how trauma impacts our nervous system, some simple shapes and practices and themes we can go with to respond to what our nervous system does in the face of trauma. From there, we move into the fundamentals of yoga philosophy and practice. A lot of people ask me, is this a yoga teacher training program? It's not a 200 hour learn how to put your feet in bridge pose training program. So we do have people come into the program who don't have that um, 200 hour yoga teacher certification who are wellness providers, but this isn't going to prepare you to like tell people where to, you know, put their knee in warrior two or something like that. Um, different, but we do cover the fundamentals of yoga philosophy and the elements of practice and how they are responsive to the needs of someone who's experienced trauma. Week five, we go into principles of trauma-informed yoga. So if you're teaching to populations that you know have experienced trauma, say you're going in to teach a class with combat veterans, right? Simple things <laughs> that are helpful to know on the front end so that you can plan to reduce triggers and increase resilience rather than, you know, finding out as you go the things that can be really triggering in this practice. Because it's not, you know, if we're doing this work, it can be a lot. We want to be skillful and not just go in and step on nerves. Week six, we talk about advanced principles like shame and dissociation. Week seven, we do a research review. And week eight, we have a practicum. So if you're looking to share this with other folks, there's a really structured and approachable way for you to then apply it, right? Early in its stages, this program was six weeks. We added on the foundations of health. We added on the practicum because people at the end were like scared. How do I do this? What do I do next? You do your practicum, you get your feet wet, you work with who's around you, who's in front of you, and you continue on. Okay, so the practicum is the last part of the certification pro process. 
And the other piece for certification is you just turn in your reflection questions. Every week there's reflection questions. If you want to get certified, you keep a log of them and turn them in at the end. Okay. So this spring is unique. I've been reflecting on what brings me life and love in my work. And I just really honestly love connecting with each of you. So I'm adding eight live Q&A and discussion sessions, weekly discussion sessions throughout the program with me. Now I'm gonna give you a little heads up. You've been with me for almost an hour now, so you have some sense of what that might feel like, but sometimes we get a little bit silly, okay? And I think that's a good thing because we're doing this hard work. Um, you know, we'll have some casual time to, my hair is up now and in this picture, to let our hair down to um, ask questions that might feel a little bit vulnerable. You know, I, I fully stand by like no such thing as an um question. We want to air them if you're thinking it, other people are thinking it. This is a place where I also want to share some reflections I've had recently as I've seen um, different sort of tangents pop up or opinions. You know, I feel like, especially on social media, we see all these assertions and opinions. So there's a couple of these that I'd like to chew on in these calls too, just to have a little bit more in-depth discussion together around them and what they mean. Enrollment is open today. So you can go to howwecanheal.com and get all the information and apply to enroll in the program there. I am offering a sign-up bonus. If you've been sitting there, I know a couple of people have applied and are waiting. If you've been like waiting to enroll and you enroll today, we don't offer, I don't offer a single one-on-ones. They used to be like a with support option when you go to enroll. I don't offer that anymore, but the first five people to enroll are gonna get an extra one-on-one -on -one with me. So we'll get to set up a Zoom call or a phone call and address the work that you're doing, how you're doing it, how you wanna be skillful. And you can really use that time as an extra training in whatever way serves you. <clears throat> and anyone who uh, enrolls today before midnight will get dissociation yoga and embodied, embodied healing. It's an extra training with Dr. Marianne Kate. She's from Australia, from Bellingen, those of you out there. And it's an excellent training. She is world-class in this work, has done research that no one else has done on the prevalence of dissociation, on what causes it, um, the predecessors as well. So excellent, excellent training. That's available totally free with the training through Midnight Pacific tonight. So if you've been waiting to enroll, I encourage you to jump in and join us. It's all online at howwecanheal.com backslash Y number four, letter T letter Y, number four, letter T. And you can find that from howwecanheal.com at the drop-down menu as well. So we're pretty much at time. Let's give away some books. <clears throat> okay. I am going to give away, first of all, I don't know how many. I think I only have one left of embodied healing. Okay, I'm going to give away one embodied healing and one Yoga for Trauma Recovery print book. The middle book is only available in um, online on Kindle. It's a little harder for me to give that one away now, but stick around because um, I do have a way to give that one away. Embodied healing. And let's see how we should do this. In the Q&A box, open up the Q&A box and let's have you write one word about how you feel right now. One word about how you feel right now in the Q&A box. And I'm going to give it to... Let's see, pick a number. Grateful, excited, human, compassionate, grounded, inspired, inspired, hopeful. I love it all. And I'm going to give it to number one, two, three, Claire Prange. Prange? I don't like pronoun mispronouncing last names. It happens to me all the time, though. So sister, friend, <laughs> human. <laughs> You're feeling human, Claire. Please, in the Q&A, it's... Um, it's confidential. You can write your email address and we will contact you to ship you a copy of Embodied Healing. Congratulations, everybody. Yay, one more, one more coming. Okay. <clears throat> In the Q&A box, oh, hopeful, reflective, inspired, grateful. I love it. Love, love, mwah, mwah, mwah. In the Q&A box, next giveaway, Yoga for Trauma Recovery. Right in the Q&A box, um, one 
thing you'd like to do next? Like as you're walking or no, let's see. Yeah, let's do this. As you're leaving this training, what's a feeling or a thought you're carrying with you into the rest of your day? And I know it might take you a second. Claire, got your email. Thank you. It might take you a second, but remember, I'm going to pick a random number in here. So you don't always have to be the fastest. So one thing you're taking away, one feeling or thought you want to bring with you out into the world as we wrap up this training. Peace. Wellness, working toward mental wellness. Oh, you're Kelly's baby sister. Oh, I can't wait to send you that book. That's amazing. Releasing, nourishment, grief and releasing, moving through to nourish myself. Joy. Hi, Glenda. Design. Oh, I like that. A bit shattered, desperate to heal working toward mental wellness. Okay. I saw that. I just got back up to, okay. Nourishment, compassion, safety, clarity, love. Ah, Claire, I love it. Now I know I'm pronouncing at least your first name, right? <laughs> okay. Now I have to pick a number. Um, wait, I want to read this one out. I feel strongly I'm doing such meaningful work. I realize how much there's out there for me to learn. Um, Amazing teachers such as yourself to learn from. Thank you so much. They say you're welcome, Karen. Variety. Thank you, Tracy. Yes, so much love to each of you. Okay, I've got a pick from here. Let me scroll back. Glenda. Glenda McCarty. You get a copy of Yoga for Trauma Recovery. Gratitude. Thank you. Glenda, go ahead and put your email in the Q&A. <laughs> Everybody give it up for Glenda. Okay, I'm always the person on the call who's like, pick me, pick me, pick me. And if I don't get picked, I'm always like, wah, wah, wah. so I really want you all to walk away winning today. I'm going to email everyone who's still here a copy of How You Can Heal, a strength-based guide to trauma recovery. As I mentioned, it's only available online. I will just send you an easy PDF copy and you're welcome to use it, share it, love it please read it. <laughs> please read it. You know, you can skim it. You can read it fast. You can read it slow. You can read it with coffee. You can read it in the bathroom, whatever, whatever works for you. But I do want to share that with you. So put your email in the chat and I will send that book to you as well. Um, I think I'll be able, I think I'm able to pull from Zoom people who are still here live. Um, but if you want to make sure you get it, just put your email into the Q&A box and I'll make sure you get a copy of How You Can Heal. So much. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Awesome, Karen. We'll love to have you. Yay. Okay, I'm seeing your emails come through and I'll make sure you get a copy of the book. So <clears throat> we're pretty much out of time for Q&A, but if you have questions, I want to thank you for being here and just for being the love buckets that you are. I know you are all such beautiful, inspiring people. Um, some of you because I know you in person and some of you because I just asked. Eh, I think I know you, you pro healers and you healing professionals. Oh, good. Christy, I'm glad you're enjoying the podcast. Another season of How We Can Heal uh, podcast is coming out in the spring. I think I'm meeting with my producer next month to decide the date. So thank you. Keep up with me in the podcast. Please come join the training if you're thinking about it. You know, I was thinking while I was practicing yoga this morning about the things I love the most, I've been the most fearful of and put off. Like I had Isabella, my daughter, when I was 43, because I was like, I want this so much and I'm so scared. <laughs> and so it took me a while to work through some of that fear. But I find that that's the case, uh, that a lot of times the things that we really feel called to, there's also like a lot of emotion around that. So if you have any follow-up questions, if you want to figure out if the program's right for you, happy to help. Alexis and I are happy to respond to you. Lisa at howwecanheal.com. And the website for the training is just howwecanheal.com backslash Y4T. Really hope to see you there and just want to send each of you some love. So I'm going to go full screen, stop my share, and give you just one of these and some of these. And thank you again so much for your time. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks, Karen. That's really sweet. That I seem like an amazing person. I mean, I think so, but. 